Hello and welcome back to the third episode of Girl Sex 101. Girl Sex 101 is the book club that I am doing with another Emma named booktuber, the wonderful Emma Tobias, and I will of course link to her channel below. We started doing this book club together back in January because we decided that we wanted to read some books that challenge the most common narratives we come across today about female sexuality and what it means to be a girl and what it means to be a girl and have sex. So today I'm going to tell you about the last book we read and at the end of the video I will announce next month's book in case you want to read along with us. I will link to all our previous episodes below, but this last month we read The Miseducation of Cameron Post by Emily M. Danforth. And I think I have to say that this is my favourite we've read so far. The book is set in the 90s and it follows Cameron Post from when she's about 12 years old and has her first kiss with a girl who lives nearby all the way through the next few years of her life and her growing to understand her own sexuality. Cameron seems to live in quite a religious area, so that obviously has a big impact, but the main impact is this huge thing that happens right at the beginning, which is that as she's having her first kiss with this girl, Irene, her parents die in a car crash. So for her, those two things will always be inextricably bound together. It's a slow moving book and we read it over the course of two months because it's also a long book as you can see but I'm actually so glad that we read it slowly so I could savour every word. It's one of the most beautifully written books that I've read and I'm kind of a speed reader. I have a bad tendency of just going and skimming through the words but this one I wanted to savour every single word because they were all meant to be there on the page. So because of that the plot doesn't really feel like the most important thing and I have heard some people complain that it moves quite slowly but I actually didn't mind that at all. I liked that it moved slowly because it felt so in depth. The first pretty much half of the novel follows Cameron growing up in this town, she's living with her very religious aunt after her parents have died, and we go through meeting these different girls that come into Cameron's life at different points, and the different love that she has for each of them, and the different desire that she has for each of them, and I just was really enjoying it, so I didn't want it to go any faster. But roughly halfway through, something happens, and Cameron ends up being sent to a Christian conversion centre, and that's the rest of the book. There's definitely a big shift in tone at that point, because the first half of the book, while there were definitely sad moments and there were definitely struggles, mainly it felt warm and romantic and genuine, and I loved each different relationship she had with each of these girls. I loved exploring how different they all were. Emma and I always talk on Voxer when we're reading our books, and through the first half of this book, all we could really say to each other was, I just love this so much, I'm just really enjoying this. So the first half was just glorious. The second half of the book does get much sadder, because suddenly she's at this conversion centre and we meet a whole host of other queer characters and hear their own backstories and how much harder some of them have had it. There were moments in the second half that made me cry, but that's not to say that it becomes a sad book. It's still, I felt, really empowering to see Cameron keep hold of who she is. Of course there are moments when she wavers, because she's in this Christian centre where they're constantly just ramming it down her throat how wrong she is. So of course there are moments when things are really hard, even even for Cameron, but she does make this group of friends who are all resisting the message that the centre is giving them. So there was this constant beacon of hope the whole way through, even the much darker second half. So that's really all I can tell you without ruining any of the actual things that happen. I know it seems like I've said quite a lot, but that's actually just the sort of framework and then these little episodes and scenes fit into it. So I won't tell you about them, you'll have to read the book to find out. But in general, I fell in love with this book and I fell in love with every one of the characters, even the ones who are sort of the villains. What I thought was so good is that Emily M. Danforth makes every single character three-dimensional even her very religious aunt who sends her away, even the teachers at the conversion center, they're all real people, they're all complicated. You can fall in love with those characters even while you hate the things that they stand for. And I just thought that was so powerful. So I would give a five stars to The Miseducation of Cameron Post. I'm excited but nervous for the movie version. Usually I just hate all movie adaptations because they're not as good as the book. So here's hoping they don't ruin it, but fingers crossed it could be a really beautiful movie. And I can already guess that this is a book I will be rereading over and over again. Okay, so what are we reading in the month of May? We have decided to read Catelyn Moran's How to Build a Girl. I haven't got a copy of it with me because I don't own it yet, but I'm really intrigued to read this one because I think Catelyn Moran, I have very mixed feelings on. She's kind of a Lena Dunham-esque figure for me, but I also just haven't read very much of her stuff, so maybe this is a judgment that I shouldn't have jumped to. From the very little I know about it, it's also set in the 90s and it's about a girl who decides to reinvent herself after something embarrassing happens. So she decides to rebuild herself as a new girl and it's all about her learning 
what it takes to build a girl and self-discovery and finding yourself as a girl in the world or something like that so it sounds great and Emma and I would love it if any of you would like to read How to Build a Girl along with us this month do tweet at us or whatever if you're reading it because we'd love to hear your thoughts and then we'll put up a video at the end of the month talking all about it so for now hop on over to Emma's channel to see what she had to say about the miseducation of Cameron Post and do leave me a comment if you've read it because I'd love to know if other people loved it quite as much as I did and of course don't forget to give this video a thumbs up if you liked it and hit that subscribe button for new videos every Friday see you next time.